All right, guys, we're talking just the basics on turbine systems for HBLP spray guns. If you're considering a turbine or maybe you just bought one and you're a little overwhelmed, stick around. This is the topic for you. So if you're new to spraying with turbines or maybe you've had compressor based guns in the past, it's kind of a whole different world when you get into the turbine side of things. The spray guns look and behave differently, the hoses are different, and there's kind of a different set of requirements for maintaining and operating your system. So um, what I find about these turbine systems is the manuals tend to detail more the, the operation and cleaning of the spray guns, but they give you very little information about the turbine unit itself. So I wanna focus on all the details on owning, using, and maintaining these turbine systems on a very basic level. So if you're brand new to turbine systems, this will all be just your speed. We will talk a little bit about the guns and the common features of those that you can have for a turbine system. But first, let's talk about the hose. The hose is very heavy duty, yet it's fairly flexible. There's a protective tube on the turbine side of the hose, and that's just a heat shield. We've got a threaded fitting here, so we'll install that on the unit to get started. Simple threaded fitting attaches the air hose to your turbine unit. You wanna get that finger tight, and then maybe a quarter turn with a wrench, and that's all set. To get electrical power to the unit, we'll go ahead and spin this around. And it's just a quick connect electrical fitting for standard 110 volt household plug-in. All right, let's look at the overall features of the turbine. Everything's contained neatly in this nice metal box. Sturdy carrying handle up top. Power on off switch is here. And the kicker for the Q5 is this variable speed control knob. This will let you dial in and precisely the amount of air pressure that you need. If you're working on a project that only needs the power of say a three stage unit, you can just back this dial off until you're getting good atomization, yet little to no overspray. If you're working with a thicker, more viscous fluid, you might want to dial it up comparable to maybe a four stage system. But with the five stage, you're really unlimited you can crank it up to the maximum of 9.5 PSI, which will spray just about any coating imaginable that's approved for these Fuji guns. Have you ever noticed there's so many variants to the different turbine systems, even within one brand? And if that's kind of mind boggling for you, here's how you start. First, consider how many stages you're gonna need. That's the power output for the turbine. Typically you'd see a two stage, three stage, four stage, or even five stage unit. The more stages you have, the more fans or the more power output you can get in terms of air delivery, the PSI. Now um, also what you need to consider is whether you need a quiet unit. So uh, the standard turbine systems like a Minimite, if you look at a Minimite three stage or four stage, um, those might have the power that you need, but they're a louder unit um, the latest technology is in this Q Platinum series. Uh, this is the Q5, and what the Q stands for is actually quiet. And there's a lot of engineering that's gone into these turbine units themselves so that there's no direct passage of sound waves out of the unit. And they've put a lot of work into keeping these quieter in the shop setting. So if you thought you might be doing mostly thin coatings, you could get away perhaps with a two or a three stage. But if you never wanna look back and say, hey, I wish I would have gone for a higher power unit that can really be unlimited in the thickness of coatings you can spray, I would recommend looking at a four or a five stage unit. So that would be a Minimite four or a Minimite five, or if the noise of the unit is really important to you and you want that quiet performance, the Q4 or the Q5 Platinum would be the models you'd look at. All right, so let's pull the internal filter out of this unit and we'll show you how to wash it and replace it with a clean filter before we dry the other one. You always want to have at least two filters on hand because the thing is you don't want to put a wet filter back into the unit. 
But if you have two on hand, pull the dirty one out, wash, and while that's drying, pop the replacement filter in and you won't miss a beat. This is what the filter looks like. This is a Fuji item number 5029. It's eight inches long by five inches wide and two inches thick. It's great to have a couple of those extra on hand. Do consult your manual or the website on the particulars for a year turbine though. Um, the Q5 uses just this one filter, but I do know that other models sometimes use two filters. Okay, so these square openings around the back corner of the turbine unit are the air intake ports. This grid keeps any foreign objects from passing into the turbine. But to replace the filter, this is really a great design. They couldn't have made this any easier. Just pull out the filter from the bottom. We'll throw that in a dish of warm soapy water and clean that a bit. In the meantime, we can just replace it with a new filter. Make sure you press it all the way up in there so that the filter covers these top squares in the grid and then you can kind of wiggle down the bottom, make sure it covers you on the bottom side, just like that. All right, we'll grab that filter and I don't know if you can see on this shot, but I can see actually it's dotted with squares where you can see a little bit of the finish was drawn in and that's exactly the reason we want to rinse this off. So we'll soak it in warm soapy water Scrub it a little bit and set that out to dry. I just want to reiterate, never put a wet filter back into your turbine unit. If you have a spare handy, you can use that. If not, you've got to wait for this filter to completely dry. So there's a couple of different options when it comes to outfitting your turbine system with a spray gun. There's the pressure assist gravity style gun. That's a really versatile gun to have in the shop. The other style is a bottom feed also with pressure assist. Okay, so you have your main hose from the turbine and then you have a six foot flexible whip. Now this is a real advantage because it's more flexible and it's lighter weight, really makes it easier to spray your projects and be up close to the project without fighting the hose. There also is an inline valve and this is just a simple valve. You can modulate the amount of airflow coming from the turbine that actually reaches the gun. Some people will put that valve right on the end of the flexible whip so that it's between the whip and the gun. And I don't really care for that layout because it, it increases this length too much and it actually makes it a little bulkier. For that, it's hard for me to spray inside of a cabinet. So what I prefer to do is, if I'm gonna use the inline valve at all, I'll put it between the main hose and the whip and that way uh, there's just no extra bulk here right at the gun and this is actually a much better setup for me than the old compressor style guns because you had that big regulator plus probably two compressor fittings and it just sticks out too far. You know, the gun layout is already pretty tall because of the gravity feed style gun. So anything we can do to minimize the bulk of these fittings is really going to be a good thing. Now in practice what I find because I have the Q5 with the variable speed control I really don't need this. I could easily remove this valve. It wouldn't make any difference for me. If I need more or less air, I can make that adjustment on the turbine itself. Now the same whip hose fits on both styles guns. So this is the classic T70 style with pressure assist. And the other one was the T75G. You get the gravity feed, but they both fit the flexible whip just the same way. As far as gun controls, the main one is the fluid control is on the back here. Clockwise limits the amount of travel at the trigger and decreases the amount of fluid output. Okay, so often what you'll do to set up the gun initially is to crank that down clockwise and then back that out three or four half turns and see what kind of trigger action you have. Okay. Once you get up, you get your gun set up to spray, keep backing that out until you get the amount of fluid you like coming from the gun. And then you move on to setting your fan pattern. And that's the anodized aluminum knob on the side here. The cool thing about these Fuji guns is all the controls are in blue. Fluid knob, fan control, and air cap, which is removable and interchangeable with different size sets. So this fan control pattern is very sensitive. You just make small adjustments and you can go from almost a small circular shape 
to a wide fan for overlapping strokes. Adjusting the air cap pattern is simple. Just loosen this. Once you retighten it in this orientation, you'll have a horizontal fan, which is great for spraying up and down. Loosen it again. When you're in this orientation, you'll have a vertical fan, and that would be the position for spraying side to side. Adjustments on the T70 gun are identical. Fluid control knob in the back, fan width pattern on the side, adjustable air cap set. The only thing that's a little bit different is the 1000cc cup versus 600cc on the gravity feed version. You just flip this lever, rotate the cup, and that'll release it. You do have a little straining filter on the bottom of the inlet tube there. Those are, they can be clean, but they're also replaceable and they come in 10 packs. So you can reinstall the gun, lock that in place. Another consumable are these pressure assist tubes and check valves. They can be cleaned to an extent, but at a certain point, you'll have to replace those. I rolled out my big airless paint sprayer to illustrate a point about the hoses. That hose in an airless sprayer actually contains paint. It's different on a turbine system. The hose on a turbine system is just an air hose. Makes cleanup a lot easier. You always want to have the turbine on the floor, never up on a workbench or countertop. We'll fire it up and adjust the variable speed output to about 75% to start. So just a few simple adjustments with the fluid control knob and the fan pattern, maybe swapping out to a different air cap set is all you really need to do to get going. First time you do use your gun, be sure to run some thinner through it to clean out anything from the manufacturing process, and then you're pretty much good to go. Of course, it goes without saying, you'll be using a respirator with cartridges that are approved for organic vapors. Be safe in the shop, and we'll catch you next time.